Captain Ian Gemmell, pictured here with Murray Davis, the chief executive of Air New Zealand, played a controversial role in the Erebus story. He was accused by some critics of playing a key part in the destruction of evidence which could have been damaging to the airline. Gemmell, the airline's chief pilot, was one of the first people to get to the wreckage, and indeed he was the person that found the two black boxes. You must be delighted at the condition that they're in. Well, we're obviously very, very pleased that we found them as quickly as we did, and uh, they appear to be comparatively undamaged. Ann Gemmell always strongly denied claims that he knew, even before he went to the crash site, that Air New Zealand had changed the computerized navigation flight plan just hours before the fatal flight and failed to tell the crew. I had no knowledge of any error. We had evidence that was known at Auckland on the night of the uh, disaster. I don't recall, Your Honour, having been told of that evidence or that the knowledge. However, lawyers for Captain Jim Collins and the Airline Pilots Association found his evidence at the Commission of Inquiry unconvincing. If Air New Zealand knew the computerised navigation track was different from the route given to Captain Collins, they argued, did Ian Gemmell go to the crash site looking for Captain Collins' briefing documents? And did he spirit this recovered evidence away before the accident investigators could see it? You took some envelopes of material back with you to New Zealand. <coughs> From McMurdo, though, didn't you? I don't recall. Which were they? Can you help me there? My information is that you were in the pos in possession of a blue plastic envelope, which you were seen leaving McMurdo with when you departed. Well, that's news to me. <clears throat> I have no recollection of any blue plastic envelope. Air New Zealand management soon discovered that the co-pilot, Gregory Casson, had left his briefing documents at home. They were uplifted by Air New Zealand's Bruce Crosby, who went to the home of Anne Casson, herself a pilot. I was not in the house at the time, and they were taken without my knowledge and without my permission. And I did not find out until a couple of days later. So two days later you found out that Captain Crosby had taken away yes. all uh, documents, including private documents, yes. uh, belonging to your husband, which related to flight. Yes. I asked Captain Crosby to give me back the box, yes. and he would not. And as for the briefing, he said that there were no briefing notes that it was in a manual which I found an insult to my intelligence. Bruce Crosby had been tasked by the Airlines Pilots Association, ELPA, to liaise with the grieving crew families, but his critics believed he seemed more interested in protecting the company. ELPA's Arthur Cooper. He sort of went rogue, and I didn't know. I didn't know all about that. And I was horrified when I eventually learnt what he'd done. Bruce Crosby is the man forever linked to the mysterious fate of Captain Collins' ringbinder. The black notebook found amongst the wreckage was thought to contain information about the doomed flight. Crosby returned it to Maria Collins with all the pages removed. Well then, how do you suppose the pad of papers secured by the ring binders that uh, could have uh, disappeared. I would have no idea, sir. Um, as I say, unless they were removed because they were damaged, that would be the only reason. If papers were removed from the ring binder, who would have done that? I would have myself, I presume. Well, do you recall doing that? No, not specifically. Police later investigated these Air New Zealand witnesses over alleged removal of evidence and perjury, but no charges were ever laid. Yes. Well, 
to be unfair or misleading to you in any way, Captain General, but did you go into what was left of the cabin area of the aircraft on Mount Erebus the day following the crash? It wasn't possible to do that. Did you, for example, see the instrument panels? Yes, I did. N. Gemmell died in 2012. We wanted to ask Bruce Crosby for his side of the story, but he declined to talk to us. Whatever the truth of their actions, both men are remembered for the impression they created at the inquiry as they gave their evidence before Mr. Justice Mann. I'm Gary McAlpine, and this is Erebus Flight 901, Listening of Lies.